Hi guys, welcome to lesson 9-1, Quadratic Graphs and Their Properties. Our objective for today is that I can graph quadratic functions in the form y equals ax squared and y equals ax squared plus c. So our vocabulary terms for today, we've got parent function, which is the simplest quadratic function. Uh, and we'll kind of see a little bit later on what that means. Parabola is the U-shaped curve of a quadratic graph. So if you've heard, you've heard that word before, I know we've used it in these lessons before. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line that divides the parabola into two matching halves, which passes through the vertex. And the vertex, this is the highest or the lowest point of a parabola. If A is greater than zero, the vertex is a minimum. If A is less than zero, the vertex is a maximum. And our essential understanding, a quadratic function is a type of nonlinear function that models certain situations where the rate of change is not constant. The graph of a quadratic function is a symmetric curve with a highest or lowest point corresponding with a maximum or minimum value. So problem number one is just going to be identifying a vertex. So we're looking for what is that maximum or minimum point. So in letter A, it's going to be where the graph goes from going up to going down. Mr. Wolf marked the point right there, the ordered pair for that. Well, okay, for, there's our axis of symmetry. So we can see uh, that each side is symmetrical. And our ordered pair is negative 3, negative 1. And that is a maximum. We can see that is the highest point on that curve. Uh, everything else is below that. Okay. Our second example, letter B, again, let's find where we go from uh, incre decreasing to increasing, and it's right at the bottom there. That is our axis of symmetry, so you can see our, our curve is the same on both sides. And so that ordered pair is at 1, negative 4. And that one is going to be a minimum, because it is the lowest point on that graph. Okay. All right, now we want you guys to try letters C and D on your own, uh, and then check back in with us for the answer. So letter C, we're looking to see where that graph is at its lowest point, where it goes from decreasing to increasing, and it's right there at the ordered pair, negative 2, negative 3. And that is a minimum. It's the lowest point on the graph. Letter D, we're going to look at that graph. We, are, we have a maximum. It's our highest point on our graph. So we're going to have a max, and it is at negative 1, 4. All right, so now graphing each function of the form y equals ax squared. So we want to graph the function and then identify what the domain and range are. So let's start off with just our uh, x, y table, and we can plug in a couple values for x and y. Um, ones that I always like to do are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Okay. All right. So uh, negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Negative 1 squared is 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 0 squared is 0 times 0 is 0. 1 squared again is 1 negative th times negative 3 is negative 3. And 2 squared is 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Notice our, uh, when we put our points down, we've got 0, 0. We go negative 1, negative 3 negative 1, negative 12, so we're just going to have yeah. to put a point a little below our curve. So it'll be roughly right there. And we're going to do the same thing on the positive side. Oops. Now if you'll notice, the graph is symmetrical. And we can see that our vertex is at 0, 0. And on our data table, you can see that if we went one unit to the left and one unit to the right, they had the same y value. They were both negative 3. So now let's remember back to chapter or unit four. What is our domain? What is our range? So our domain is all of our inputs. So x values looks like we're going off to infinity in both directions. So our domain is going to be all real numbers. 
And our range, well, what is our maximum value on our curve? It's at zero. So the range is going to be less than or equal to zero. All of our outputs are going to be less than or equal to zero. Okay. Now, letter B, we've got y equals 1 half x squared. So let's do the same thing. Uh, we're going to put a table together. And this time, how about we just do 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, Mr. Boland has used the approach of work smarter, not harder quite often. And it's one of his favorite mantras. So I know that a graph, a parabola, is symmetrical. So I really only need to figure out values for one side of my vertex, uh, and then I can just mirror them to the other side. So 0 squared is 0 times 1 half is 0. 1 squared is 1 times 1 half is 0.5. 2 squared is 4 times 1 half is 2. 3 squared is 9 times 1 half is 4.5. 4 squared is 16 times 1 half is 8. So there's four points that we can graph. We've got 0, 0, 1.5, 2, 2, 3, 4 and a half, right about there, and 4, 8. So now we can mirror those to the left-hand side of our uh, y-axis because we know that a parabola is symmetrical. So Mr. Boland is cheating a little bit on this. So I'm going to tell you right now, it's easy to come up with these values because in this lesson, all of our functions are going to have a, their uh, axis of symmetry be the y-axis. So this will be a little trickier in future lessons where we are not on the y-axis. So our domain is going to be, again, all real numbers. We can put any value we want in and we're going to get an or output. And our range is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. All right, I want you guys to try letters C and D on your own, and then we will go over them uh, as a group. So letter C, we have y equals negative 5 halves x squared. So let's just put a couple points in there. We've got uh, x and y, create our little table. And let's go with um, 0 and negative 2, or sorry, 2. And we could do negative 2 as well. Yeah. Doesn't matter. That's too or we could right. do 4, 2. All right, so we've got 0. 0 squared <coughs> is 0 times negative 5 halves is 0. Uh, 2 squared is 4 times negative 5 halves is negative 10. 4 squared is 16 times negative 5 halves is... That's going to be a lot. <laughs> 40. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Negative 40? Negative 40. Yep. All right, so clearly we cannot graph the entire graph. Um, but we can use, we can get a good appro approximation with 2, negative 10 there. So we add 1, or 0, or sorry, negative 2, negative 10. Uh, and then when we go ahead and draw our curve in, just make sure it's symmetrical, uh, and there you go. Okay, so our domain on this one is going to be all real numbers again, and our range is going to be less than or equal to zero. Letter D, we have y equals 2x squared, so we can plug in a couple points here. Again, we're going to start with an xy table, table of values. So we're going to plug in uh, 0, 1, and 2. So 0 squared is 0 times 2 is 0. 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. Uh, and you can see that's probably about where we run out of room on our graph. So we put a point at 0, 0. We go 1, 2, negative 1, 2, and 2, 8, and negative 2, 8. Okay, and there we go. Our domain is all real numbers. And our range is going to be greater than or equal to zero. All right, so now we're going to compare 
problem number two is, or problem number three, rather, is comparing the widths of parabolas. So I've got three parabolas graphed there. We've got a y equals x squared, a y equals 5x squared, and y equals 1 half x squared. So the parent function of this is y equals x squared. That's the most basic of these functions. And actually, that one is going to be the one in uh, the middle, the middle of the three lines. So Mr. Wolf is going to highlight that one for us. So the middle of the three lines is our parent function. That's y equals x squared. Why don't we actually highlight the equation too? All right, so then our second equation is y equals 5x squared. So let's just put in a point real quick and let's see what it would be. If we plugged in 1 for x, 1 squared is 1 times 5 is 5. So which of the two curves goes through the coordinate 1, 5? It's going to be that inner one. All right, so there's our point right there. It's our inner one. So we're going to highlight that one in yellow. And our third one then, would, by process of elimination, would be y equals 1 half x squared. And he's going to mark that one in red. Okay, So you can see, um, what you're multiplying your a value by determines how wide you're gonna, your graph is going to be. The greater the number you multiply it by, the more quickly your graph is going to grow, and the narrower the parabola is going to be. So you can see, 1 half is much wider than 5x is, right? So the greater the value of your a term, the narrower your graph is going to be. All right, so anything that's going to be less than 1 will be wider than your parent function. Anything greater than 1 is, um, as a magnitude, is narrower. All right, so letter A is asking us, what is the order from widest to narrowest of the graphs of the functions negative x squared, 3x squared, and negative 1 third x squared. Now the signs don't matter. We're just looking for how wide these graphs are going to be. So the widest of those graphs is going to be the one that has that smallest magnitude of an a value. So it's going to be the negative 1 third x squared. Okay. Our next widest value is going to be the negative 1x squared. And our narrowest of the graphs is going to be the 3x squared. Okay. I want you guys to try letter B on your own. Again, you're ordering them from the widest graph to the narrowest graph. Uh, and then we'll go from there. So our widest graph, it looks like it's going to be the one that's less than, uh, magnitude less than 1, so negative 1 half x squared. Our next widest one looks like it's going to be the 2x squared. And then our narrowest one is negative 4x squared. Okay, So you're looking, if it's a fraction and it's uh, less than 1, you're going to have a wider graph. If it's greater than 1, you're going to have a narrower graph. All right. Now we've got something else thrown into the mix. Ha ha. We've got graph each, ex yeah, graph each equation and explain how they're related. So now we've added in a C term. So we're going to just start with y equals x squared. And we're going to graph these in two different colors. We're going to graph y equals x squared in blue. So do a quick table of values, y equals x squared. So 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. And that's all that's going to fit on our graph. So let's graph those points. We've got 0, 0. We've got 1, positive 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9. And we can mirror that to the negative side as well. So we'll have a point at negative 1, 1, negative 2, 4, and negative 3, 9. Okay. All right. So now we're going to graph our red line. 
we've got x squared minus 3, so we're going to do a table of values again. So 0 squared is 0, minus 3 is negative 3. 1 squared is 1, minus 3 is negative 2. 2 squared is 4, minus 3 is 1. And 3 squared is 9, minus 3 is 6. All right. So again, we've got a point at 0, negative 3 now. We have a point at 1, negative 2, and negative 1, negative 2. 2, positive 1, and 3, 6. Negative 2, 1, negative 3, 6. All right. Oh, I think my point might have been off on this one. Yeah. Okay. So what is our description of how these are related? Well, the red line is three units down from the blue line. You can see that on each one of our points. If we're looking at corresponding points here, um, we've got your vertex is down three. When you go one unit to the right, now we're going down one, two, three. From this point, down one, two, three. This point, down one, two, three. So that minus three as our C value is shifting our entire graph three units down. Okay, I want you guys to try letter B on your own. Y equals 2x squared minus 4 and y equals 2x squared. So we're going to start off with y equals 2x squared, which is our parent function for this one. So we have x squared is 0 times 2 is 0. 1 squared is two, 1 times 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. And that's about all we could fit on our graph. We did 3 squared to be 9 times 2 is 18. So we have 0, 0, we have 1, 2, and we have 2, 8. And again, we mirror that on the other side of our y-axis. Okay. Now in red, we are going to draw in y equals 2x squared minus 4. So again, we put our table of values. 0 squared is 0, minus 4 is negative 4. 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2, minus 4 is negative 2. 3 squared, or sorry, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8, minus 4 is 4. Uh, and 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18, minus 4 is 14. So that's a little off of our graph. Yeah. But we could write it in anyways. All right, so we got a point at 0, negative 4, 1, negative 2. 2, positive 4, and that's all that we can fit. So make sure you mirror it to the other side of our uh, axis. And what happened for this one? Well, our graph is moved, shifted, 4 units down. So we're moving down 4 units. All right. Yeah. Okay. Can't show that. <laughs> So we went down four. <coughs> All right, problem number five, the falling object model. <laughs> All right, an acorn drops off a tree branch 70 feet above the ground. The function h equals negative 16 t squared plus 70 gives the height of the acorn in feet after t seconds. What is the graph of this function and about what time does the acorn hit the ground? Well, you'll notice my graph, I only gave you 0 through 4 on our x-axis. And Ooh, what does a good graph need? Labels. Labels. So our x-axis is going to be our time, because that is our uh, independent variable. Our dependent variable always goes on the y-axis, and that is height above the ground. All right, and we're measuring that in feet. So we've got. All right, so we've got a uh, couple points. So let's just start. We know that the height at zero seconds, so before it falls 
from the tree branch is 70. So we have a point at 0, 70. So we can write that into our data table. And uh, we can just start plugging in some points here. And I'm going to start with, let's just put some whole numbers in. So negative 16, we're going to put in 1. So negative 16 times 1 squared is negative 16. Plus 70 is 54. And let's put in a 2. 2 squared is 4 times negative 16 is negative 64. Plus 70 okay. is 6. Now, if we were to put in 3 and we plug that into our calculator and we solve it, it gives us negative 74. OK. Um, how about we, we want to try to get a pretty accurate graph of what's going on here. So let's start putting in some decimals. So let's put in maybe a 0.5. So negative 16 times 0.5 squared plus 70, that's going to give us 66. Let's put in a 1.5. So when we plug that in to our calculator, we get a 34. And let's, we can stop there. Okay. okay. Well, actually, no, let's go 2.5. Let's do 2.5. And if we plug in 2.5 to our calculator, we end up with negative 30. All right, so let's start plotting some of these points. So we have 0, 70 already. Let's put one at 1 and 54. So it'll be just below the line there. We'll put one at 2 and 6, so just above the 5 line. Uh, 3, negative 74, can't really graph that one. We can graph 0.5 and 66, though. So we'll just have to approximate halfway between and just mm -hmm. above there. And we can graph 1.5 and 34, right about there. And you can see that's definitely a curved shape. Uh, and we can go ahead and draw in the line, which is a curve. All right, and we know, so the first question is, what is the graph of the function? We have just done that. Our second question is, about what time does the acorn hit the ground? And so I added in that uh, two and a half point just because we now know that somewhere between two seconds and two and a half seconds after it falls is when the acorn hits the ground. So between two and 2.5 seconds. Now let's think about the reasonableness of this graph. Why do I stop at zero? Well, unless there's a giant hole next to the tree the acorn is going to stop falling once it hits the ground. Okay, So we are assuming that height of zero is just going to be above the ground, or it is above the ground. Um, so unless there's a big hole dug next to this tree for some random reason, and the acorn happens to fall into it, uh, it is going to stop when it hits zero, which is the ground level. OK? All right. You guys are going to try letter B, where a child is dropping a pebble from a height of 30 feet above a lake, the function h equals negative 16 t squared plus 30 gives the height of the pebble in feet after t seconds. Graph this quadratic function, and at about what time does the pebble hit the water? Now, if you'll notice in this falling uh, object model, we always have this negative 16 t squared. Um, that's the acceleration due to gravity uh, in using when we're using feet per second. Um, so just random bit of information there. The C term, the plus 30, is always your starting height because that's the maximum that that object is ever going to be. So we've got T and we've got H, and Mr. Wolf labeled our graph while I was babbling. So we have time on our x-axis and height on our y-axis. So let's plug in some points. So we've got 0 and 30. We know that one already. 0.5, if we plug that into the equation, negative 16 t times, or negative 16 times 0.5 squared, uh, we plus 30, we get 26. When we plug in 1, we're going to get 14. 1.5 is going to be negative 6. And I decided to be a little more specific, and I put in a 1.25, and that gives us a height of 5 feet. So now let's graph these points. We have a point at 0 and 30. We have a point at 0.5 and 26, 1 and 14, 1.5 and negative 6, and 1.25 and 5. All right, so let's draw in our graph. 
So we could say reasonably that between 1.25 seconds and 1.5 seconds is when that acorn would hit, or sorry, when that pebble would hit the surface of the lake. Okay. All right. Make sure you fill out your level of understanding of this lesson. Write down any questions or confusions you may have come up with. And then make sure you write a summary in your own words of what a vertex is and how we can graph a quadratic equation. That's all for tonight. Have a great night.